Hello friends, Revolver 44 here. Today I have another beautiful revolver to show you. This is a newer version of the Smith & Wesson. This is a Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum. It's uh, their deluxe Taylor version. It's a beautiful stainless steel gun in bright stainless steel, chambered in 44 Magnum. It'll also fire 44 Special. It has a, a three and a half inch barrel. It's all stainless steel. Show you that it's unloaded. It'll hold six rounds of 44 Special or 44 Magnum. Beautiful, beautiful gun. It's a newer version. I bought this in uh, 2019. This is the um, 629-6. It has a uh, shrouded ejector. The ejector has a shroud. The um, ejector rod is kind of on the short side, but it gets the rounds out without any problem. This is uh, an end frame revolver. And that's my uh, my boy Grady. He came for another visit. Grady, say hello. Wanna say hi? Wanna say hello, Grady, huh? Yeah, I'm doing another video. He likes to come down here and uh, talk to me when I'm making videos. Yeah, like I was saying, um, it's a, a newer version. It has a, a three, three inch, uh, three inch barrel. I think I said three and a half inch before. I'm sorry. It's three inch barrel. Let's double check that. Yep, three inch barrel. Okay, it has um, the front sight is a ramp with a red plastic insert that has a pin in it. So you, in case you want to change it out, you can. Put whatever kind of front sight on there you want. The uh, top of the, the barrel is serrated. That, that, that keeps the glare down. The, all the uh, surface on the top is kind of a dull a matte finish to keep the glare down. The rear sight is uh, fully adjustable for the height here, the uh, elevation, and the windage screw here. There's a, a goal post type sight <clears throat> picture on the, the rear sight. The, um, there's a detent here also to hold this closed. And it also locks with a detent here. The um, hammer is a, a target style hammer. It's nice and wide, as is the uh, the trigger. It's a wide target trigger also. This um, this gun here has the uh, lock, the trigger lock, and hammer lock. It's a little keyhole here you turn and that locks the hammer and the trigger from uh, functioning. That came, that's on the, all the new modern Smith & Wessons, not all of them, but most of them. They changed the roll marks on the new ones too, on this version. It used to say Smith & Wesson on this side. Now it says it on, on this side. 
And on this side here, it says 44 Magnum instead of saying Smith & Wesson. They just flip-flopped the, the roll marks from one side to the other, basically. And here you have your uh, four-line address. This is uh, a three-screw frame. There's one here, one here, and one under the grip. Uh, this gun also has a round, a round butt frame. The, uh, the Smith & Wesson is etched into the frame here. If you can see that. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Um, what else can I tell you about this? The, um, the grips I changed out because after the first time... Firing this with 350, uh, 44 Magnum. This, these are the grips that came with it. And um, these things here, as nice looking as they are, they're not very comfortable for firing 44 Magnum with that. <coughs> Excuse me. What happened was they cut the web of my hand here <clears throat> shooting 44 Magnum. So that's why I changed out <clears throat> these grips to these older style grips. You see there's a lot more wood here to protect your hand compared to what you have here. And believe it or not, when shooting 44 Magnum, that makes a world of difference as far as um, protecting your hand. These are just way more comfortable when shooting 44 Magnum. If you're just shooting 44 Special, these would be fine. But uh, 44 Magnum compared to 44 Special kicks a heck of a lot more than 44 Special, believe me. Especially in a short, a short barrel revolver like this. But uh, I just forgot to give you that little pro tip, or semi-pro tip. I don't know if I'm a pro. But uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Uh, this, this gun really hasn't changed much since they started making it. Um, the 629-5, this is a dash 6. The dash 5 didn't have the, the keyhole. It had the same... Other than that, it's pretty much exactly the same. Um, that's really the only difference. I think maybe the uh, sight wasn't a, wasn't pinned either on the dash five. Also, um, on the, these newer ones, the dash five and the dash six, the um, hammer and the trigger are mem parts. That means metal injected molded, which is really not a bad thing. A lot of things manufactured today for your cars and everything else uh, made that way. It, all it means is there, the metal is poured into a mold rather than uh, machined. Uh, and th th this is also case hardened, which, um, as far as case hardening, the mem parts probably are better as far as hardness because the uh, hardening process works better that way. It's, it, it goes deeper into the metal than it did on the machined metal parts. But it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful gun. Nice heavy barrel. Now these grips are uh, a lot more comfortable. The trigger on this is excellent too. It's got a very smooth trigger. The lockup is great. No, there's no play at all. Let's uh, check the trigger pull weight. 
with my lime and trigger gauge here. Check it here in double action first. Okay, it's nine pounds, 2.6 ounces in double action. Try it here in single. Two pounds, four ounces. Nice. Yeah, this is a pretty heavy gun, being an end frame. We'll check out the weight of it here. Come on. Show me ounces. There we go. 39.79 ounces that's got some weight to it i don't think i would put this in a inside the waistband holster <laughs> i would probably if i was going to carry something like this would definitely be outside the waistband probably in a nice nice leather holster but uh yeah if, in a leather holster outside the waistband this would be doable like I said, it's got a nice short barrel, so that's a plus. Let's check out the um, the side dimensions on this gun here. So the overall length, let's see, about eight and a quarter inches long. And the height. about just about um six inches long and check the uh diameter of the cylinder which is that's a big cylinder because it's holding some big rounds that's one inch six hundred and fifty five thousandths Little over uh, one and five eighths diameter. So that's a beautiful gun. It shoots excellent. Never had any problems with it. Like I said, it's way better now with these with these uh, older style grips. I think that's all I can tell you about this. <laughs> I didn't really clean off the face of the cylinder. You can get that off with um, there's a cloth that you can you can buy. Uh, I forget the name of it, but it takes all that blackness off of there. But I'm gonna be firing it again, so I wasn't being that fussy with it. As long as it's um, cleaned, the cylinder is cleaned. In the barrel that's all that really matters as far as shooting it again that's going to get stained every time you use it but that's uh pretty much all i have to tell you about this gun today um these are readily available now they're still making these uh the 29-6 uh, the older ones those are, those are around, too. There's quite a few of them around. So, um, that's, that's all I have to tell you about this gun today. Um, I'll try and get something else out to you in the next couple of weeks. Um, this is Revolver 44. Please like and subscribe. And I'll be bringing on more, more videos out to you soon. Um, so thank you, and um, be safe, and have a good day.